Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Baker with Zell 11 Ministries, and we talked with Bill Solace and his interesting uh, take on Psalm 83 as a future war prophesied in the Bible between Israel and the Arab nations surrounding her. We're with uh, Bill Solace of ProphecyDepotMinistries.com. Bill, thanks for joining us today here at the Pre-Trib Conference in Dallas, Texas. Oh, thank you, yes. And you've recently updated your book, Israeli Stein. It's uh, Psalm 83, uh, and it t talks about and analyzes current Middle East uh, situation with the end time prophecy of Psalm 83, correct? That's absolutely correct. The updated version of Israeli Stein came out in January of 2013. Okay. Why is Psalm 83 important for our day, Phil? Well, I think it's very applicable for our time. It's a prophecy written 3,000 years ago by King David's worship leader, Asaph, who was also a prophet, we're told in 2 Chronicles 29.30. And he talks about a confederacy that is going to come together of Arab populations and people groups, which today happen to share common borders with Israel, Lebanon, Hezbollah are there, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, uh, Saudi Arabia, Palestinians, Hamas, Egypt, enemies of Israel since Israel became a nation and the wars that they've fought. And of course, the terrorist groups have, have spawned from that. But Asaph says that they're going to come together in a confederacy. They're going to form a devious plan. And they're going to try to cut the nation off that the name of Israel can be remembered no more. It's a confederacy that wants to wipe Israel off of the map. And we're told later on in Psalm 83, verse 12, that they want to take for themselves the pastures of God for a possession. Mm -hmm. So it's a prophecy that has not found fulfillment yet through the Old Testament. And they want to destroy the nation of Israel, which means there has to be an Israel. There was no Israel between 70 AD and 1948, but there is an Israel now. And what, what is the mantra of a lot of the Arab states over there right now? They don't, Hamas, terrorist population out of the Gaza, we don't recognize Israel's right to exist. Syria doesn't recognize Israel's right to exist. Really, if it's a prophecy for our time, and I sincerely think it is, uh, they don't want peace with the Jews. They no, want they one don't. more Arab state, and they want to hail the flag of Palestine over that state. And they want a universal caliphate with its capital in Jerusalem. They do. And as a matter of fact, the Muslim Brotherhood, when they were in power uh, before Mohammed Morsi got ousted this past June, they had wanted to march toward Jerusalem at some point. That was going to be his ultimate goal. Uh, and not just them, but that's also what the Palestinians, they want Jerusalem to be the eternal capital of a Palestinian state. And that's widespread in Islam. And so we've, we've been really getting a lot of pressure in that direction. When the Palestinian Authority went to the United Nations at the end of 2012, got a non-member state status, three days later, early December, Mahmoud Abbas, president of the Palestinian Authority, said one day, the, uh, Jerusalem will be the capital, the, the, eternal, the eternal capital of the Palestinian state. That's what they want. Mm. Uh, when you look at the end time prophecy of Psalm 83, uh, how many nations are involved in this confederacy? Well, when, when Asaph wrote uh, 3,000 years ago, he had Ammonites and Moabites and Edomites, and I often like to say gigabytes and <laughs> megabytes, but yeah. you know, we don't, we've got a little time, so right. I'll, keep it, I'll keep it focused. But um, he didn't have Palestinians, he didn't have Jordanians, Hezbollah, things like that. So we have to extrapolate who is he trying to identify for us when the prophecy is going to find fulfillment? Who will they embody as far as territorially, as far as ethnically, and things like that? So he mentions 10 populations, and among them, first, he talks about the tents of Edom. Now, whenever you have a member in a confederacy listed first, they tend to be very important in that confederacy. Their plight or mm -hmm. they're the leader or something like that. So tents of speak of the Edomites in a habitation condition. Tents of biblically represent refugee conditions or military encampments. So I, do, I go through my book and I do the research as to well, who are the Edomites today. And the Edomites have descended from Jacob's twin brother Esau and they have ethnical representation in the Palestinians today. The Palestinians became refugees when they first came against Israel in 1948. That's when the tents of Edom became a reality. That's true. And now we got a problem. That's true. We got, still got a refugee crisis. And what are the Arab states trying to banner? A Palestinian state. You know, let them have Palestine. We need one more Arab state. We don't want them to be refugees anymore. We want to destroy Israel so that we can 
take over the promised land, the pastures of God, so we can have a, a Palestinian state. It's amazing how meticulously accurate uh, the prophetic word of God is, isn't it? And you can mm -hmm. certainly see that in your um, detailed analysis of uh, Psalm 83. I've been told there's, uh, what, nine end time battles in the Bible? Uh, yeah, you know, actually, Dr. David Reagan um, has come out with the, I think it's something called the Nine End Times Wars of the Bible, and he does a really good job on that. Three real big ones, though, that, that I'm focused on would be the Psalm 83, which would be the climactic, including Arab-Israeli war, which I believe very well could be imminent in light of all the geopolitical met, uh, things that are going on right now, especially since the Arab Spring. Um, I think that then Israel wins that war. I point out that the Israeli Defense Forces rally to the cause, they're mm -hmm. in fulfillment mm -hmm. of Bible prophecy, they win that war, then Israel can burgeon out a little bit, a little more territory, become a little safer, they'll be prosperous, they're already very prosperous, and then you've got this big, big major uh, prophetic war in, described in Ezekiel 38 and 39, uh, where Russia puts together a coalition, nine total countries, entirely different than Psalm 83. Right. None of the That's coalition of, right. of Ezekiel 38 and 39 share common borders with Israel, whereas all and of Iran Islam is Israel, mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Ezekiel 38 and 39, and of course Iran's in the news now with their nuclear program. So uh, I believe the Israel that's involved in Ezekiel 38 and 39 were given descriptions. They're dwelling securely in the midst of the land in the latter days, without walls, bars, nor gates. Are very prosperous. Then Russia musters up its coalition to come against that specific Israel. And Todd, personally at this point, I don't believe that Israel exists entirely. They're not dwelling securely. They've got a 403 mile wall right. that separates Palestinian Security territory. fence, yeah. Yeah, and they've got checkpoints and things like that over there. So uh, now when they can eliminate the concerns with the Arab problem around them, mm -hmm. and, and certainly nobody wants war, but apparently that's what it's gonna come to. Um, then they can dwell securely and they can take down that wall if we want to look at that literally. I mean, the Berlin yeah. Wall came down real quick, so can that wall. True. So I think that we could be looking at uh, very detailed prophecies dealing with that war, Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38, and then of course the granddaddy war of all is the final climactic war when it's the Armageddon campaign, the Antichrist, you know, the, that's a, another thing in the tribulation period. Well, uh, what do you, uh, before we conclude our interview, what do you think, uh, where do you think the United States is in, in all this? Well, you know, it's interesting. I have a couple chapters devoted in the Psalm 83 book to you know, where's America, what's America's role in the coming Mideast wars that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Is America even in the Bible? You know, there's a lot of people concerned that America's may not even be referenced in the Bible, which is troubling because, you know, we're the greatest superpower that ever lived. I personally think we are mentioned in Ezekiel 38, where it talks about a protesting group that doesn't get involved in the war. They're called uh, Sheba and Dedan, but you have the merchants of Tarshish and their young lions. And I would believe that that would probably be the merchants of Tarshish, which would probably be the UK and the young lions would be like America. The sort of, a colony of Britain. Yeah, offshoot yeah. of that. Um, but the problem there is that we're not necessarily coming to Israel's rescue in that. We're not, you know, we seem to be kind of like standing on the sideline going, what are you doing, Russia? And so the concern is that what happens to America to go from such a great superpower status to probably just a protester on the sidelines, that kind of thing. And so I've got a big concern about the direction America is going in right now. Um, I think maybe the uh, rapture happening before, or right before the tribulation plays a factor into their um, pacifist protesting role? Well, that would certainly uh, <clears throat> it would neutralize not only American army, uh, but it would also neutralize a lot of the European armies and the Western armies in general. Matter of fact, in the scenario you're suggesting there, if you have uh, Israel winning some wars in Psalm 83 and the Russian war, were actually not the IDF, but the, the Lord stops that war, we're told with a fire and hailstone or brimstone in Ezekiel 38. Um, and now you've got this different Israel, this burgeoning Israel, and all of a sudden you take out the rapture with the Christians. Mm -hmm. A lot of Christians will go out of Europe. Christian, you know, now all of a sudden it's Russia. It's a big void. Yeah, the coalition in Gog and Magog is predominantly all Muslim. No Muslims, unless they believe in Jesus, and if they believe in Jesus, they become a Christian, not a Muslim any further. They are not, those Muslims are not going to be raptured. Their armies will still be 100% intact. Western armies will be neutral. Greatly depleted. Greatly yeah. depleted. Not yeah. just America, but also you know, Lutherans in, in Germany and you know, that sort of thing. 
So you would have a, a situation where Russia could say, look, Iran, Turkey, Libya, and all the other members involved in that coalition say, look, the only thing standing between us and superpower status now is that burgeoning Israel over there. Let's go get their wealth. They think they're dwelling securely at this point in time. Let's go tackle them. So uh, that would be in Ezekiel 38 and 39. So that's if the rapture occurred before Ezekiel 38 and 39. So, you know. It makes sense. You know, it all seems to fit together and the way things are unfolding. Well, we don't know the timing, of course, of the rapture. Right. It's a signless event. It's imminent. Right. Uh, it happened at any moment. I subscribe to a pre-trib rapture. I don't think the church will be appointed to the wrath Amen. of God. That so do I. Displayed, <laughs> displayed in the rapture and the tribulation. But... I also believe Psalm 83 is a pre-trib uh, scenario, and I point out why it can't happen in the tribulation. When you understand the psalm, it has to happen before the tribulation. I also believe there's sound reasons to think Ezekiel 38 and 39 happens at least three and a half years before the tribulation. They're burning weapons for mm -hmm. seven years. For seven years, yeah. So that's, in that's the right. first half of the tribulation, three and a half years, they could be burning weapons. In the first three and a half years before the tribulation, they could be burning weapons. So some of us subscribe to the thought that that's also a pre-trib event and the rapture, of course, pre-trib. Right. So three big pre-trib events that seem to be on the nearby horizon. Yeah, for sure. And all game changers for the world. Yeah. And so it brings us to the point of, well, okay, what, what does that mean to the common guy, I mean, and the Christian even, that's still here. Well, it's certainly an opportunity to present uh, to the unbeliever the accuracy of God being able to predict the future uh, millennia ago, and, and also it, it uh, opens up an opportunity to share the gospel, you know, and which you've done it through your ministry. Bill, before we close our interview, uh, how can people um, get in touch with you and learn more about your ministry? Well, prophecydepot.com, like Home Depot, prophecydepot.com, that's my website. I've got articles, I've got uh, my books and products, I've got DVDs and things there. Uh, so I would invite them to visit there. We have a newsletter that's free, we send out through the email, and all the TV and radio shows that I'm on and things like that. So it's all right there, prophecydepot.com. Well, great. Thanks so much for joining us today, Bill, and giving us your insights on uh, Bible prophecy and end time battles, such as Psalm 83. Thank yes, you, sir. thanks, Todd. Okay.